A wedding is a celebration of the miracle of love. And Blake and Lauren, today in the presence of God and your families, we celebrate this miracle in your lives. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that as we come uh, to this time where, where Blake and Lauren uh, are joined together as one, I pray that you'd bless this time, Lord, that you would use it as a time to encourage them and that uh, as we start, uh, as we see the start of this new, this new marriage, this new life together, I pray, Father, that you would bless them and do a great work in their lives, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. The Bible tells us in the quiet of the Garden of Eden that God made man in his own image. But when God looked at man, he saw that it was not good for man to be alone. So with loving care, he removed a bone from Adam's side from which he fashioned Eve, and God brought Eve to Adam to be his wife. The Bible goes on to tell us, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Blake and Lauren, becoming one flesh is a process that begins today with this wedding ceremony as the two of you become one. Uh, Blake and Lauren, believing that it is your desire that two become one, it is my privilege this morning to ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her family, her mother, and I. Thank you. Before we move the vows, I want to share with you three things that I believe are essential to building a marriage that will last, and I believe that your heart is that your marriage will last for all of your lives. And I want to just real briefly to share these three things with you today. If you're going to build a marriage that lasts, then it must be built on faith in God alone. You both uh, today, or you begin today to build a household of faith, and both of you have uh, shared with me that you have professed that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. And if you desire to have a marriage that stands the test of time, then you both must commit to continually grow in your faith, devotion, and service to God through Jesus Christ. And the closer you grow to God, the closer you will grow to one another. The, the second thing is if you're going to build a marriage at last, then it must be built on selfless love. This, this kind of love is not built upon feelings or expectations, but is only possible through God love or agape love. This kind of love rises above selfishness and feelings. And some of its, its dimensions are described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. The third thing is if you're going to build a marriage at last, then it must be built on sacrificial love. The term sacrificial love refers to a love that sacrifices itself in order to put the needs of the other above their own needs. Jesus put it this way when he said, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. The love that never fades is built on a love that always gives. Blake and Lauren, as much as you've expressed a desire to be united in marriage, I'm going to ask you to take, to ask, I'm going to ask you to take a vow this vow is not only made to each other, it's also made in the presence of God Almighty. So I want to ask you to join hands and, and to say these vows to each other, okay? Uh, Blake, in taking Lauren to be your wife, do you promise to honor, to love, and to cherish her in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, in hardship as in blessing, until death alone shall part you? And Lauren, in taking Blake to be your husband, do you promise to honor, to love, and to cherish him in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, in hardship as in blessing, until, you, until death alone shall part you. You've chosen this today to seal your vows, to honor, love, to honor, to love, and to cherish each other by the giving and receiving of rings. Blake, would you take your ring and place it on Lauren's finger and repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I seal my promise, I seal my promise. to be your faithful, and loving, husband, and loving husband, as God is my witness. God is my witness. Lauren, will you take this ring and place it on Blake's finger and repeat after me? With this ring, With this ring I seal my promise, seal my promise to be your faithful, to be your faithful. and loving wife, <laughs> as God is my witness. <laughs> Blake and Lauren, may your love never fade. May you never take each other for granted, and when you're old, may you be found hand in hand, still thanking God for each other. Never forget to treat each other with tenderness, kindness, and respect, 
and remind yourselves often of what drew you together in the first place. Blake and Lawrence, in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas and with authority of God's word and with great joy, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Let's, let's pray together. And Blake and Lawrence, this is really the prayer that I have for you. It's from Scripture. And my prayer is that, that the Lord would bless you and that He would keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Blake and Lauren, you may now seal your vows with a kiss. I now present to you Mr. and Miss Blakeney Brown. You gotta do your happy dance now. You gotta do your happy dance. <laughs> Try not to preach. <laughs> You're so beautiful. I almost teared up one part. Sir? I almost teared up that one part. <laughs> That'd have been bad, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yes. Nice. 